I've noticed, and a few of you have noticed, that I use the term cold shut quite frequently in some of the videos and discuss avoiding cold shuts. And some people have asked, well, what's a cold shut? How do they happen? What's wrong with them? And clearly I need to explain that a little bit better. I've unfortunately made some assumptions on terminology that everybody knows. And I should know that not everybody knows all the blacksmithing terminology. Perhaps a printed glossary somewhere might come in handy someday, but I'll, I haven't done that. So instead, we'll just talk about cold shuts today. And what is a cold shut? A cold shut simply is when material comes together and it's pressed into a seam that shouldn't be there, but it isn't forge welded. And I'm sure the cold term comes from being too cold to weld, even though you can have cold shuts where you never intended to weld in the first place simply because you moved material in the wrong way. And I'm going to try and sketch out a few things. I think I can sketch it and explain it better than I can by forging. If I forge it, you end up with little cold shuts to look at on the camera that are about this big, and you probably won't see them on the camera, but if I sketch them this big, I think we can see them. By the way, an old rusty piece of sheet metal and a soapstone make a great chalkboard in the blacksmith shop. And hopefully I can get out, stay out of your way while we do this. So cold shut, let's say we're drawing out a bar and we're doing half face blows over the anvil and we want a little shoulder right here but we come back and decide this is the right size through here but we need a little bit more length through here so we're going to take another bite at the edge of the anvil let's see that's an anvil by the way there's the horns so you know. uh, we're going to take another bite right there now what likely is going to happen when you do that you're going to start forging this up but there's going to be material here that is pushed this way and you're going to end up with something that looks like that. as you forge that down, that becomes a cold shut. So this just ends up with a little crack there. You end up with this, but this is forged in here. And this is going to look okay, but you've got this little thing in here you forge down, and that is a stress point. That's where that's going to crack and break. It's better off actually filed out and left round, even though that's ugly and you, it's not what you wanted, than leaving that little seam in there, because that does want to break easily. So that's a very classic way to get a cold shut. And it could be along the length of the bar, or it could be in a, a little tongue like that. The other day when we made this bending fork, I talked about cold shuts here. That's because I was taking a piece of bar that was much taller than it was wide and I was working it this way between hammer and anvil. What happens then is it starts to spread out up here but it has a skinny waist. So you end up with something kind of hourglassy like that. Or mushroom. This is what happens to your hammers and your chisels as you pound on them all the time. And as you keep going it'll get shorter and it gets wider, which is what you want. But this part in here sometimes will form a cold shut. I'm not really trying to draw a little anvil there. But if you don't keep these corners pushed in and work it down from the sides, you end up with something here. Now because this is in a long bar, ultimately it's going to be in something that looks like this and you're going to end up with that cold shut running down here that isn't as big a deal especially in mild steel so if I have a cold shut in this fork and I don't see one I think I managed to keep it at bay and we didn't get one but if there's one running lengthwise here in mild steel it's probably not going to create a stress problem if this was made out of tool steel and you hardened and tempered it 
it very well might. That's where the, the crack is going to happen when you, you quench it. So it's better to avoid it, but in some places it's not as big a deal. And it's, when we made this bending fork, we started by punching a hole. And then we chiseled. Now as we chisel that hole, it starts to, to pooch into the hole kind of like this and it leaves these little ears that when you forge these tines down and you're forging this way because you've opened it up that can seal down and again if this is tool steel that's where it's going to crack and for this tool even in mild steel that's likely to propagate a crack so you don't want that in there. That's why I took time to file this off and make it look more like that before we, we did anything. Again, it was opened up, so it was a... So instead of looking like this, where this was going to get forged down and create a cold shut, I filed this back to get rid of that little point, and then when we forge this out, we don't end up with a cold shut. So you have to think about that when you're making some of this stuff. And if you just watch the way things are going together and the way they're forging, you'll see the cold shuts getting ready to happen, and see where they might happen. Now in this piece for our window grill, the upset corner can often form a cold shut right in here if you don't upset enough material into the corner. And the one we did by that test method actually ended up that way, so it was a problem. The other thing I see is when I punched this and it started to swell, that starts to create a possible cold shut here. I don't think I'm too worried about it because it's enough material here and this is a low stress project but if you were making something like a shelf bracket or a security door or a railing that really mattered, making sure there's no cold shuts in here is quite important. So really you should try to avoid cold shuts. It's not real hard if you think about what's happening, if you watch what's going on, you see it start to happen, maybe you can correct it by forging, if not hot rasp, file, grind, whatever it takes to get rid of the material that's folding over inappropriately. See if you can adjust your technique to avoid it the next time. But sometimes it's just something that's going to happen. When I make adzes, for instance, it's one of those things that I'm taking this taller dimension and I'm forging it down and I frequently end up with a little cold shut down the edge. Absolutely unacceptable in the finished product. That's some place where I go ahead and grind that cold shut off. I found that under the hydraulic press because it puts so much force, if I start flattening this there, it bulges the sides out. If you do it by hammer at the anvil, it bulges the tops out because the force doesn't get to the center of the bar. So by starting these under the hydraulic press, I actually avoid the cold shuts. So that's a way you can adjust your technique sometimes. But not everybody has a hydraulic press and not everybody can go to a much bigger hammer to get that done. So just pay attention watch what's happening and know that cold shuts are probably never going to be your friend so there's something to be avoided. So that's just another quick tip for the day. I hope you found that useful. Give the video a thumbs up. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Head out to the shop, make something, stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.